Eventually, even one day we were stuck in traffic, he pulled over at a masjid. He said, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go pray. He didn't tell me to pray. Because he didn't, he, he, he used to hear me curse, use filthy language, criticize Islam, talk about how the Quran doesn't make any sense. I used to say all of these things. And he used to sit in the car and go, uh-huh, uh-huh, yep, mm-hmm, nothing. No response, no debate, nothing. And one day we're stuck in traffic on the LIE and he pulls over, takes this exit, stops at some random masjid, little building, old warehouse building, and says, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go inside and pray. And with all of my arguments about being an agnostic or not believing in religion and all of it, something in me said, I need to go too. And I went inside the masjid, it was maghrib. And when I prayed that maghrib, it was the third rak'ah, I still remember it. It was the third rak'ah that we joined. But I hadn't prayed in so long, I didn't even know how to pray. So I joined the third rak'ah and when everybody said salam, I said salam with them. I didn't finish the prayer, I didn't know how much it, you know, but it felt really good. And that entire conversation, the rest of that trip, I didn't say anything. I just went back home and started looking up how to pray again. And started, you know, thinking about how do I do this, I need to, that felt really amazing. And I got into this habit of trying to pray and then I didn't know how to pray so I would have him lead the prayer so I could follow along. He's the one who introduced me to the masajid around the Queen's area. This brother is also the person who introduced me to what was going to be my Arabic teacher, what was going to be my Quran teacher. What I'm trying to tell you right now is that had it not been for the MSA, I wouldn't be standing here right now. I find it pretty incredible that I just led a prayer at the MSA National Convention and my journey started with the MSA.